जय हिंद आई एम डॉक्टर आदित्य प्रताप सिंह एसोसिएट प्रोफेसर इन आईटी डिपार्टमेंट अजय कुमार गर्ग इंजीनियरिंग कॉलेज टुडे इन कंटिन्यूएशन टू द टॉपिक एल्गोरिदम एंड फ्लो चार्ट वी आर गोइंग टू डिस्कस द पार्ट हाउ टू क्रिएट फ्लो चार्ट फॉर द रिटर्न एल्गोरिदम इन द प्रीवियस लेक्चर वी हैव कवर्ड हाउ टू राइट एल्गोरिदम्स वॉट इज प्रॉब्लम सॉल्विंग हाउ टू solve a problem and write a process of uh, solution in a structured way so we have already studied how to write a algorithm now next step is the flow chart flow chart is a visual representation of the algorithm or we can say a, a graphical version of the algorithm sometimes what we try to understand in a text mode is not easy to understand that's why we sometimes have been given some kind of uh, 3d models to make something uh, more understandable more uh, what we can visualize so in the similar way here another tool for uh, completing the problem solving process is flow chart so whatever we have written as a solution to a problem can also be drawn in a graphical form to clearly understand the process of problem solving so it as i have already told you that flow chart is a graphical version of algorithm or we can say it is a visual representation of the sequence of steps and decisions needed to perform a process process that is being a solution of a problem so in the flow chart part we uh, create it using a certain set of graphical uh, symbols and these symbols represent a particular component of the process so this flow chart shows a logical solution it emphasizes it emphasizes individual steps each step is created by a separate symbol and they are interconnected with the help of arrows we use arrow symbols to interconnect two individual steps it the flow chart must always have a start and stop point there should not be a condition where the flow chart is uh, bound in a loop and it is going on and on and on so there should be a starting point and a terminating point a step in flow chart must connect there should not be any version of flow chart which are not connected with one another or for one problem there should not be a flow chart which has two or three individual or distinct uh, components which are not connected with one another so such kind of flow chart are not permitted each step in the sequence is noted within the diagram using a particular shape meant for that kind of process every step which are uh, being used in the flow chart are connected with the help of directional arrows that means arrow like this which shows that we are transferring the control from which point to which point okay so next we move on to uh, understand the symbols being used in the flow chart so here is a symbol oval which is generally used to represent the beginning of the flow chart and end of the flow chart both are having same symbol so we can use this oval symbol or sometimes we can use a rounded rectangle also like so this kind of rounded rectangle we can also use 
when uh, creating a starting or ending point of the flow chart another thing is the next symbol is parallelogram this parallelogram represents a input or output operation so for starting and ending rounded rectangle or oval for input or output operation we have parallelograms both have same symbol for representing an input operation and for representing a output operation another symbol is rectangle rectangle is also an important symbol because it denotes the process being carried out whatever calculation we are performing whatever data manipulation is being done that is always represented in the rectangle so all the calculation computation part is represented in the rectangle diagram another thing is diamond diamond symbol is very important because whenever we need to take a decision which path we need to follow like decision making so it it denotes the decision making generally in the form of if else if this is true if the condition is true then we will go this way otherwise else we will go on another way so that conditional part or where the decision has to be taken that is kept inside the diagonal uh, this diamond symbol and next is the parallelogram that is we have already told that it is for output and input both and the control flow is represented using directed arrows the direction of the logic flow from where we are leaving and from where we are uh, going to next step so in a ordered way because algorithm is what algorithm is a ordered representation of step by step solution of a uh, of a problem so here we need a order to be followed also and this order will be followed using this arrow so let's understand more so this is a round, rounded rectangle as i have already told you rounded rectangle or oval both can be used for start and stop and these blocks are used to uh, provide the beginning start or the end of the process and they should contain simple labels to indicate the process of the program like we can we can write like here start and we can write like here stop so we can provide like this another important thing is the parallelogram which represents in using uh, parallelogram represents input and output and this it should be labeled within the brief description of the what we are inputting what we are output like for example i can write like uh, read a comma b so we are reading two values which is going to be stored in a and b or we can uh, we can write like print a so here this is what this is output operation and this is what this is a uh, input operation but at a time only one either input or output so this or this not both we, we cannot write both either input operation we will write or we will write output operation next thing is process process where we perform some kind of calculation like uh, it it should also be labeled with the brief description of what kind of process we are having like for example we can write sum equal to a plus b so here we are computing the addition of two values a and b and storing this addition into a another variable that is sum so this part is 
doing some kind of computation or manipulation then we will write inside the rectangle symbol because rectangle symbol is used to represent the uh, process part another important thing is the decision block so here we will give a condition or a question to the decision that should be made so we will write a question like uh, for example we can write if a is greater than b if it is true then it will go this way if it is false then it will go this way so such kind of decision we will take using this diamond symbol so here is an example of uh, this flow chart like here we have start a start so this is the this is what this is our algorithm this is what this is algorithm and we will implement or we will write the same algorithm in a graphical way using this flow chart so start start is here we can write like using rectangle uh, rounded rectangle or using oval read a b so it is what it is a kind of input operation so it is written in parallelogram then we have c equal to ab so c equal to ab is written like this this is what this is a process or computation and print c it is what it is output so we will write output here and every step is connected with the directed arrows these directed arrow like start and we come to first part read a and b after reading we will add these a b and store it to c and then we will move on to giving the output that is print c and then stop so this is how we create a flow chart for a corresponding algorithm so first we need to define the solution select it and then we will write a uh, we can write we can start with writing pseudo code then we will write a more refined version of it that is algorithm and to make it better understandable we will write, we will create a flow chart for that particular algorithm so this is decision structure like here we have a and b if a is greater than b yes then we will write, write print a is large if it is not then we will write b is large so here we are taking a decision so let's now try to uh, understand more like uh, here is an another algorithm like we have input four marks then we created the grade by adding these four mark four subject marks divided by four so we have created a grade if grade is great less than 50 then we will print fail if it is more than 50 then we will print pass so we can write algorithm for the same like this is input and we have m1 m2 m3 m4 we have taken input we have calculated grade equal to grade equal to m1 plus m2 plus m3 plus m4 divided by 4 and we take decision is grade is less than 50 if yes then print fail otherwise print pass and both from both end we are coming to an end that is the stop part so this is how these are some simple algorithms which we can write so like uh, find the largest number among three numbers so here first we need to write an algorithm let's start then we perform input abc and if a is greater than b then go to step 4 otherwise go to step 5 in the step 4 we are having a is greater than c go to step 6 otherwise go to step 8 if a is greater than b and a is greater than c that means a is the greatest and we will write a is greatest in step 8 
if it is not then we check b is greater than c if if not then we will go to step it a is having c so like you can check if a is greater than b if it is true we will come here if it is false then we we will check with b so if a is greater than b it is true then now we need to check with the c a is already greater than b now we check with the c if a is also greater than c that means a is finally greatest so we will uh, write a is greatest so in step 6 if it is not that means a was greater than b but a is not greater than c that means who is greater b is greater so if a, a is already greater than b and a is not greater than c then it means c is greatest so we will write here in using step 8 if a is not greater than b then we are checking we are coming to 5 then we are checking if b is greater than c is a it is already greater than a now again we will check with whether it is greater than c also if yes then b is the greatest otherwise step 8 and last one we will stop so how to create a flow chart for this we can write like this also or we can create input a b and c check if a is greater than b we are coming here a is greater than b if yes then we are checking a is greater than c if yes then we will give a is largest and come to stop if not that means it is greater than b but it is not greater than c so c will be greatest so c will be given if it is not greater than b then we will check with the b if b is greater than c then b is greatest otherwise c is greatest so we can write like this okay uh, now what we can do we can uh, also try to understand uh, a algorithm which uh, requires a loop kind of thing which requires a repetition of steps so in this situation what we can do like if i want to perform if i want to uh, create a algorithm and flowchart for finding the factorial of a given number so let's write factorial of a given number so First, we need to write a algorithm. So let's start. Let's have step one. What we have always step one is the start of the problem. The next is step two. That is, we need to read a number for which we need, we try to find out the factorial. So we read n. And next is step 3. Now we need to find out whether this number what what we are going to uh, find. So we can have a, a variable like f which will hold the value of the factorial and we initiate it with the 1. f is equal to 1. And Next, in the next step, step four, we what we will check if n is equal to zero or n is equal to one. If n is zero or one, then what we need to do? Step five. In case of 0 or 1, factorial will be 1. So, we will simply, uh, if this, then go to step. We will check what step we have. If it is not, if it is greater than 1, then we will try to find out the factorial. So, in 
process of finding this factorial, what we need to do? We will write f equal to f multiplied by n. We are trying to find like, for example, if we have factorial 3. So, how we will find 3 into 2 into 1. So, this process we are we are going to implement. So, we have implement multiplied by n. Then again, we will check step 6. If n is greater than 0, then go to step 5. So, if still n is greater than 0, then we will go to step 5. Here, what we add n is equal to n minus 1. So, these we have I've combined these two steps f is equal to f into n and n we reduced and check if n is still greater than 0, then again we will perform this multiplication and else step 7 else go to step 7. So, here in 7 what we have? We will print the f. f is what? f is the factorial of that number. But here, so if it is 0 or 1, then we will print f is 1. Otherwise, we are calculating. Here, what is happening? We are going back step 5. That means, we are going back from 6 to 5. So, that is creating a loop. It is creating a loop here. And last step is step 8. What we have? Stop. So, now what we need to do? We need to implement it in a flowchart. We, we want to create a flowchart for this step. So, uh, let us create. First, we have start and we are coming to next step. Next step is what? Read n. So, re for reading a value, what we require for reading a or for a input, we require a parallelogram. So, we have a parallelogram read n. We have created a parallelogram and then we are moving to this f is we are assigning a value 1 to f that is a computation kind of thing. So, we are performing f equal to 1 we have this. Now, we have a decision we are having a condition if n is 0 or equal to 1. So, let us have this condition if n is equal to 0 or n is equal to 1. So, if it is 0 or 1 then if it is yes or true then in that case what we need to do? We will simply print f and move on. But if it is not, if it is not like uh, no in that situation what we need to do? We need to perform some kind of computation. So, we have a rectangle for computation f equal to f into n and n equal to n minus 1. So, this computation we are performing if it is greater than 0. Again, we are computing this and if after computing this, we are checking if n is greater than 0. So, again, we have a decision if 
n is greater than 0 if it is then again we are coming here if it is yes then again we are doing the same thing until unless n becomes less than 0 then and if it is not then what we are doing we will print the value so printing for printing purpose we have print f this and this step is also coming here only and for finally we have after doing this we have stop so with the help of uh, algorithm we can create a flow chart and algorithm how we are writing for writing algorithm we need to do a research on the number of available solutions then we need to find out the uh, best or optimized solution for our problem statement and our uh, environment and then we will write algorithm for implementing that solution so we will write the steps of uh, implementation of uh, the algorithm and then we will convert this algorithm into a graphical version that is flowchart and flowchart are, are very uh, good tool to easily understand what it will be the flow of uh, process which we are going to create okay so that's all for uh, this we have done simple flowcharts for writing uh, simple problem we have uh, uh, written decision making flowcharts and also we have written a flowchart which contains some kind of loop here loop is there so we are coming backward and this is creating the loop so i hope you will uh, try uh, writing uh, some other some other algorithms and creating flowchart for the problems uh, wherever you find you can get some problems in the exercise of the books or you can get some problems uh, from the internet and try to implement those problems from your own. If you have any confusion, you can uh, write questions in the comment. Thank you.